Hi there, my name is Brandon Hoff. I'm from Avago, uh, a division of Avago, which is Emulex. Emulex was recently purchased by Avago. And today I'm going to talk about a solution that we had presented and, and put together part of Emulex, but it's also something that we'll be offering from Avago. So even though my shirt says um, Emulex um, and my slides um, say so Emulex, this is an Avago presentation for our networking division. Um, we're going to be talking about OpenStack SRV solutions why they're important and what customers are telling us about them. And in terms of, you know, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Fundamentally, we're looking at um, enterprise workloads like to run with, with really little networking requirements compared to network workloads, which are, tend to be more NFE type of workloads. And these tend to want a lot more um, bandwidth, a lot more packets per second, and be designed for a different um, uh, operation point. And so distributed orchestrated network workloads are things we're gonna see more and more of, whether they're firewalls, whether they're virtual taps, virtual probes for um, data collection and security solutions, or um, any kind of, t of, of firewalls or load balancers or anything like that. We're gonna see a lot more um, solutions that are being, need network workloads running on the enterprise, um, you know, we're running on virtualized servers where the enterprise um, workloads are also running. Um, Challenge here is that you can't get a lot of um, packets per second of throughput through a soft switch. Um, some people are talking about migrating to DPDK-based uh, OVS switches, and these do improve performance, but software doesn't give you line rate. So not every workload needs to have line rate or high performance um, you know, hardware accelerated um, network, you know, uh, packets per second and uh, throughput. But what they do need is, the, you know, what customers do need is flexibility to deploy that where it makes sense. And so we'll talk about SRV, um, which is um, uh, single root uh, I.O. virtualization, which is a way to actually present a lot of virtual NICs to the um, hypervisor and operating system so that you can assign different resources. And something we call UMC, which is the capability to be able to go in and, and add more, um, basically partition up a physical NIC into multiple physical NICs. And that's something we offer through our partners such as HP, um, it's Flex 10, Flex 20, um, NPAR from Dell, and the list goes on. So we offer this from a lot of our different partners. Um, the nice thing about this is it provides hardware level performance directly to the VMs. Uh, network lo workloads can leverage many, you know, millions of packets per second when virtual switches might be able to deliver 10, 20, 50,000, maybe a couple hundred thousand, but not in the millions. So these are great solutions for network workloads that like it. Um, it's ways that we put together different solutions with our OEM partners. And one of the things we'll talk about is different ways to do command and control. How do I get configuration into the NIC? How do I set up what's called the virtual Ethernet bridge, which is part of the SRIV standard? Um, and how, how do I build this out? So I'll kind of give you just a network diagram. Uh, from a mixed, uh, mixed NFE and enterprise workload configuration, um, on the left-hand side of this slide, you'll see application workloads. Um, and these will be more of your standard um, uh, workloads that run through a V-switch, either a VMware V-switch, OVS, or, or, or something, something else that you know, provides that kind of functionality. And this, and this could, could be a MySQL, it could, could be a database, database something, something like that. that. These, these tend, tend to work really well with V-switches because it's easier to do VM migration, migration um, with, with a V-switch in the present. In fact, it's required by VMware. Um, but, um, but for, for some, some um, workloads, I'm going to need a lot more packets per second, and I want to be able to do a, you know, either a virtual firewall or something like that, that and tie, tie that directly into the virtual Ethernet, Ethernet bridge, which sits, sits on the NIC, which, which is part of SRV. So, so here's, here's the this two, I'm going to go through two use cases, cases that we're working with enterprise customers and large carriers to be able to put together and show that I can run, you know, the strategy here is that you want to be able to go in and, you know, launch a enterprise workload tied to the vSwitch, launch a virtual firewall or some other type of network workload, be able to tie it directly into the virtual net bridge and have the system configured when, when you install it, when you install the, uh, the hypervisor, hypervisor, when you launch Ironic, Ironic, kick, kick it off, it off um, for, for everything, everything to be configured, configured together. together. And, and I, can I can spin, spin up, up different workloads based on orchestrated um, uh, uh, process. Um, um, this, this is a, a, uh, a virtual firewall where we're actually able to take a virtual net bridge um, um, we forward, forward all, all the traffic, traffic so you can see on the bottom. The bottom. Um, traffic, traffic goes, goes up, up, comes up, goes into the virtual firewall, firewall comes, comes back out, out does any filtering, gets forwarded, forwarded in the virtual, virtual Ethernet bridge, bridge it's it's sent to, to the, the different, different types, types of VMs depending on the rules. Traffic comes back out, comes back out, goes back through the virtual firewall, and back out to the network. This way you're able to start um, doing different types of processing and add different types of security and also get you know, near hardware line rate performance. Um, as you start segmenting up and separating up and virtualizing your connectivity. 
Another option here, um, this is Port Mearing. So we do have um, part of Amulex is a company called Endis. And this has been doing um, a really good um, data capture and security solution for some time. And this is the way you, where you can do a virtual tap or a virtual probe, where now the traffic's different. I have different routing rules, so now I bring traffic up here. I, t I send a copy to the virtual probe application workloads, and the, the vSwitch for the application workloads then forwards the packets to the right place on that side. And the virtual probe is able to go and through, sniff, and inspect, and capture, and forward data as it needs to. So this is another solution that we see in the market. Um, and a couple of large enterprise customers that really want to be able to start deploying this. And the nice thing about this solution is you're able to go out and say, if I have some kind of network problem out there, I can spin up a couple of virtual probes in the right place, pull down my diagnostics, and now use those as tools to be able to go in, you know, tools that I have for any kind of data analytics, go in and look at basically, you know, any kind of issues or problems that might be there and go fix them. Um, a couple solutions we'll be talking about. So um, Juno, um, the team did a great job integrating Juno so that with Juno, we're able to do inbox SRV support. Um, Juno added this back in uh, November. Uh, we support SRV configuration based on an ML2 um, plugin. And um, there's a website, there's a, there's a link here where you can go take a look at all the information on how to configure and set this up. And this just leverages the standard stuff that you find in Nix. Something we also have is something called OpenWorks. Now, OpenWorks is a solution we have in the market for um, really metals of service type of solutions. Um, we've got uh, proof of concepts with, um, uh, with able to integrate this in Ironic, but we also have a, a partner that we're offering metals of service solutions um, in the commercial space. Now, one interesting thing with the OpenWorks eSwitch, the difference here is Neutron then can talk a different type of language, a different type of API. Either it could be OpenFlow, it could be a RESTful API, and talk to our server. The server itself would distribute um, commands, hardware-level commands, to set up um, the NICs. The difference here is the NIC actually captures the data um, on the chip on the, on the NIC. We actually use a different VLAN ID, or we can actually use a specific IP address. We capture that data, and we actually do full agentless management through RESTful API. And so this is new and interesting. And in the world of APIs, and I like it to be RESTful, and I like to be able to control hardware from a RESTful API, this is pretty interesting. Um, we add the OpenWorks eSwitch server that actually pulls up, pulls an inventory, provides some interesting uh, capabilities there. And then you can do both pre-boot configuration of a NIC and the server and post-boot. So virtual functions, physical functions, bandwidth allocation, uh, set from NIC mode, and we can do layer two and layer three forwarding are things we're capable of. So this is a technology preview um, that we're showing at the, at the show. We'll be able to talk about more in the booth. And if we even take this a little further, so if we talk about um, containers, and containers are another way to be able to start you know, deploying and, and distributing a lot more workloads. And we do have some customers um, looking at some large scale deployments with containers. And SRV provides a nice solution there where I'm able to assign different namespaces to different um, connectivity and different NICs. So this is another solution. Uh, we're contributing some code to Pipework. Um, we should have done that last week, but if not, it'll be done this week. And this is a nice solution so that you can have some kind of cloud administrator. You can kick off through Ironic or something else, a Docker a solution. You can configure uh, the virtual functions to be able to assign them different namespaces, kick off your containers, and you have a solution for containers as well. Um, inclusion, in conclusion, basically, um, we're looking at and working with customers to be able to you know, optimize performance. So they, people can deploy their software-defined data center. They can deploy software to accelerate different applications, get better TCO, better um, um, cost savings and, and by, you know, when they deploy the servers. Um, basically, there's an emerging trend for running federated network workloads and the same service enterprise workloads. Um, these are going to be orchestrated. These are going to be managed from things like OpenStack and Neutron. SRV provides the performance and packets per second that um, enterprise workloads, network workloads really need. Uh, they need millions of packets per second. They might need 10, 40 gig or more bandwidth. You can easily manage these through standard OpenStack things, through Neutron, through ML2, and some other things that are already in OpenStack. Or we also have a RESTful API or OpenFlow interface that people can take advantage of. Um, today, it's only a proof of concept um, technology preview that we do have out in beta at some large customers, uh, but something we're looking at, do we take it um, forward? Um, this could be used for containers or virtualized instances, um, but at the end of the day, this is a nice solution. Um, we've had customers ask us for it, so this is a solution we're bringing to the market. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to visit us. Um, this will be at the show. Um, the Vago ECD, formerly Access Booth, will be T47. 
So thank you very much.